Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. Welcome to the Animation Station Podcast. Your home for discussions and debates about all things animation. Each week, we'll rank, review, and revel in animated shows from yesterday and today, and from around the world. So grab your acne slingshot, set your mobile suit to autopilot, and put on your mouse ears. The Animation Station Podcast begins now. We've got a special guest today. I'm joined by my good friend Oliver Ware. What's up? Should be more uh, foreign foreign correspondent Oliver Ware. Foreign correspondent Oliver Ware. All right, yeah. um, Oliver, do you want to tell everybody what we saw last night? Last night we saw Batman: The Killing Joke. Yep. Yes, uh, I saw it here in Oklahoma, and you saw it in yeah. Chicago Land. Yep, Chicago Land. Chicago we're- Land. Where we get all the, all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, yeah, Batman: The Killing Joke is um, the animated film of the 1988 comic, well, I guess graphic novel by the same name, Batman: The Killing Joke. Mm-hmm. Oliver, have you read the comic? It's, uh, I have a long time ago. Yeah, same for me. I think I read it back when I was a freshman. Yeah, it's like so. fr- freshman in college or high school. A uh, high school. High school. Yeah, so it's been a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. I think I think mine was like so- sophomore year or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do we want to go ahead and go spoiler heavy from the thing that's been out for twenty seven years now? Darn straight. Okay, we're gonna go spoiler heavy. <laughs> All right, Oliver. Um, just real quick, first impressions. What did you think? First impressions, uh, I, I did I did like the movie, um, uh, and as as you know, you know I'm a big fan of the DC animated yeah. uh, features and everything. Uh, the main thing that is like the main uh, property prop, uh, movie of theirs that I like the best is probably Batman Under the Red Hood. Yeah, the, yeah I want to I want to talk about Under the Red Hood a little bit, a little bit later. Yeah, but pr- pretty much that's like the uh, benchmark that I've compared all their subsequent movies to and uh it's like this one it doesn't for me it doesn't quite reach that but i still think it, it, it's very good yeah i was reading some reviews where there were people that were saying that this was better than red hood and i wasn't 100 percent sure what movie they watched yeah but for me it wasn't on the scale of red hood yeah but i was like i, I think with i think with with that with that movie in particular uh there's a there's a whole lot of you know it's like oh oh hell yeah moments or something like that with this with this one the the nature of the story is that it's it's, it's dark and dour and then it's like by the end of it you're semi depressed by the end of it. yeah and let's let's go ahead and just go straight into the story um do we do we even do we want to start off with that opening what was it like forty five minutes that we got is it, um that is I, don't, a, I, don't a, even, a I don't even know what comic they got that from so it, it was it was only about uh about 20 ish minutes or something oh, it felt like forever <laughs> it, it kind of did but you know it uh so the pr- primary purpose of the pro- prologue you know was to set up uh berber to kind of have be more of a character on her own because i guess because in, in the main comic she's pretty much just there to be you know it's like an object for for, for joker to you know to to do bad things to. Yeah. Uh, do, do you want to, Oliver, just go, uh, just tell everybody what was the prologue? Like, just start, just give us, like, a brief synopsis of what all went down. Okay, the first portion, it focuses mostly on Batgirl and her perspective of uh, her missions with Batman. Uh, in this first part, she uh, takes on a mission with uh, with Bats to, uh, to, to follow and bring down a guy named uh, Francesco. Francesco. Or, uh, Paris France. Paris France, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, basically, 
Bat Batgirl starts to get a little bit too takes a little bit too personally, and uh, and also uh, Francesco he he starts to take a liking to her. Kind of, I guess they're trying to set that up maybe as him being like her her Joker. Yeah, that like, that's the way it felt. Was he was supposed to be her Joker? Yeah. And uh, anyway, throughout the middle of this, it, it turns out that uh, she some gives a little bit of backstory of Batgirl. At this point, she had been working with uh, Batman for three years. And uh, over the course of this time, I guess she started to harbor some romantic feelings for for Batman, and uh, that's where that's where things kind of get a little bit weird. Yeah, um, we we culminate the Batman and Batgirl relationship under a gargoyle. Yep. So like under kinda... uh, under under Goliath. <laughs> Goliath, yeah. <laughs> Keith David's like, oh yeah. <laughs> So so yeah, I mean, basically the only thing that really matters there is after Batgirl and Bats have their night together. Yeah. She decides that she's no longer going to be Batgirl just cuz they can't make it work. I was like it's like there's that component but then there's also the where wherever B- Batman's right, you know, he Yeah. He, at, at this point, he he says to her during, during this point, whatever, he's like, you you just see this as a game. You haven't seen this as, you know, you haven't you haven't been brought to the edge yet. You haven't you haven't seen you haven't seen the the end of the end of hope basically, you know. And uh, they they kind of touch on that wherever she basically she gets he into a final confrontation crap. with Francisco, and then she pretty much nearly beats him to death wherever. I guess that's supposed to signal wherever she. In addition to the whole, you know, her and Batman thing, that kind of gets her to kind of say, you know what, <laughs> this bad girl thing isn't for me. Yeah. It... Then I guess there's some sort of time skip. There really doesn't tell us how much time goes by. Yeah. But Barbara, she's off on her own. Um, no, she's no longer really doing the Batman, Batgirl gig. She's kind of by herself, her and dad are starting to kind of get you know a little bit back together again i guess there yeah. was some tension there maybe which i mean yeah. she's off gallivanting at night dressed as a bat yep and then it's like pretty much after after that little prologue happens it goes straight into you know the killing joke proper wherever yeah where we learn the true origins of the joker or or possibly because he, he, he later says uh if if I if I if I'm to have a pass, I'd re- pass, I'd rather have a, have it be multiple choice. So, yeah. This is I guess I, I guess he saw like an image of something and then that this brought up this particular memory or what he thinks of the past. I I thought it was like I, I remember reading that again. It's been so long, but watching that again, I was like, you know what? This is a really good backstory for this character. Yeah. Because it makes you empathize with him. Yeah. And a good villain is someone that you can empathize with. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it, it's, it's, it, it, what makes a good villain is that you can see their side. You may not necessarily agree with them, but you can see it. Exactly. You know? Yeah, like the Jim Hadar. Yep. No, 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 you don't, it's, uh, I don't agree with the founders. I, oh, I don't. no, I don't agree with the founders, but I feel bad for the Jim Hadar. Yeah, they were raised to be addicts, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, but they can't help it, though. Yeah, they're just true. they're just born that way, like that uh, Lady Gaga song. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, but yeah, we go. Yeah, we we get all this backstory with the Joker. Um, basically, to kind of make a long story short, he was a kind of like a failed comedian, mm-hmm. and he and his wife uh, were expecting a child, and he decides he wants to get them out of this, you know, crappy apartment, get them a bit more of a better life. So he gets with these gangsters and they're going to hit up this, this building that's like right next to the, this, uh, chemical building that he used to work at. The day that they're supposed to break in though, his wife that morning, I guess has a tragic accident and both she and the baby die. So yep. the Joker's, I much, I get as, kind of in mourning. Like in the in the show, they didn't really give us too much of that. He was just like, yeah. "Oh man, they died. I should go to the hospital." Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's like it's one of the things where he plays it like he's in shock. You know, he's yeah. like, oh, 
Oh, and, shit. Yeah. So, yeah, so he's in shock, but the two gangsters basically force him to go along with this to break in. So they give him the guise of the Red Hood. Mm-hmm. So he goes, they break into the chemical place. However, their security, obviously, because it's a, you know, chemical plant. Yep. And uh, they get shot at. Both the gangsters die. Batman comes out. He's trying to, you know, basically capture the Red Hood. He's like, the Red Hood is mine. Exactly. <laughs> so he run, tries to, like, Red Hood, like, Joker tries to, they didn't really say his name, did they? Nope. Okay. Nope. So the Joker tries to run away, trips on the cape, falls into the vat of acid. Very Jack Nicholson. Yep. That's it. Then, then he just uh, goes through goes through the pipes, and Eddie comes all deformed, and... He looks at himself and then just just starts, starts laughing and out laughing. Yep. And the Joker. And that's how we get the Joker. So, basically, the Joker breaks out of Arkham in this movie and decides I... to pay a visit to one Jim Gordon. Yep. I guess the whole time, like it, this, this whole like movie and comic is basically about breaking Jim Gordon. Yeah. Taking someone who is good. And trying to make them go insane, yeah, out of pure evil to corrupt them. Yeah, it's like the the, the I guess the point is I guess is to pr- prove to others and possibly even himself that what what separates everybody else from being him is just one bad day. Exactly. Yeah. So the Joker decides to pay a visit to Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon at this point in time is visiting his wonderful daughter Barbara. So Oliver, what happens when Joker comes a calling? Well, um, we we see how Barbara becomes Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. Well, so the Joker shoots Barbara Gordon in the stomach, which I guess goes through her into her spine, basically yep. paralyzes her. Yep. Yep. And then uh, while that's going on, it's like he has his goons beat the beat the crap out of Jim, and then. And then at that point, Joker starts to he, he takes off Barbara's clothes and then it le- leaves it off at that. But then it's like it's it's implied through different conversations that Batman has later that you know he he, he may have he may have raped her. You know? Yeah, and and that's where I was going. Like in the comic, like again, it's been years since I've read it, but I don't remember the the um, even the mention that there was a possibility that the Joker would have raped. Barbara. Yeah. I don't remember that at all. But in this movie, they want to do they want you to think that he did. Yeah. Because there's this one part Batman's looking for like it's after, after everything happened to Barbara, Batman's out looking for Joker. He goes to these uh prostitutes and they basically tell him, "Yeah, whenever he gets out of prison, you know, he usually comes by because I mean, it's usually been a while since he's, you know, done the no no cha cha yep and but they say oh yeah he hasn't been here a while he must have found somebody else and it's like oh shit <laughs> exactly so it's they, def- they definitely make the, they definitely plant that seed in your mind like, oh dang <laughs> exactly and for me did not i did not like that yeah i mean i also didn't like the whole bat and babs getting together thing yeah. either that wasn't my cup of tea yeah, well, uh, I'm more of a Babs and Dick type of guy. Yeah, so me too. But uh, it's like going back from Bruce, from Bruce Timm's earlier work, especially with uh, I guess Batman Beyond, and and then later in in one of those uh, directed direct to video movies from the DCAU. Yeah, uh, he does he does talk about it with uh, like in Beyond that he and Barbara did have that relationship together. Yeah. So I guess it's like uh, Bruce Timm. It feels like more pretty much the biggest Batman fanboy because he, he, uh, he gets them together with, you know, uh, a Catwoman, like, you know, like normal. And then in Justice League, he gets with uh, Wonder Woman. Which and then, is yeah. probably my favorite pairing with Batman I, yeah. is, is Wonder Woman. So that, that works. That, I feel like that works. It's like, this is... Yeah, this... Mm, Bat and Barbara doesn't really... Yeah. And then the alleged sexual assault is yeah. yeah it 
kind of lost it a little bit for me. I mean, I knew it was coming. Yeah. Like, I remember yeah. the pictures and everything like that, but this was a bit too much. And again, if they, they may have talked about that in the comic. Yeah, just may have missed it. Just, yeah. I, again, I, I was, what? How old was I? What, 15? 16? <laughs> Yeah. You driving as a freshman? I was uh, I was a you know a fresh faced young boy. Yeah. Back in the day, uh. So anyway, um, Barbara gets to a hospital. That's where Batman finds out that he took Jim. Batman goes to rescue Jim at this what was it carnival like circus amusement yeah, so park that the Joker has absconded with. Yep, yeah, and he has then he has all of his uh, circus 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 buddies there. It's like two headed people and midget people, were, uh, werewolf person. Yeah, well, werewolf guy was the best. Yeah, the werewolf guy was pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, werewolf guy. Um, so yeah, basically all these well the whole this well this whole time, um, the Joker had well while Batman is looking for the Joker, the Joker has taken Jim Gordon, stripped him basically had him tortured pretty much made him go through this wonderful love tunnel and seeing all these naked pictures of his daughter yeah so very very happy a little bit yeah but then there's the the broadway musical number that joker does during that <laughs> oh god do you, what what did you think about that you here's uh if you, we went and saw it in the theater um unfortunately by the time you hear this that is no longer an option for anybody it's like uh, all, all, all these things that they show with it to kind of pat, uh, pat up the running time of the feature is uh, they have a, they ha they have a yeah. the, and then a documentary at the end. Yeah, they have a thing at the beginning with uh, Mark Hamill, and uh, we'll kind of get into cast, you know, probably towards the end of this. Um, they have this thing with Mark Hamill about how he was in Star Wars, which in case I don't think people may not have known. Um, then he played the Joker and everything like that. That that was the part I watched because that's at the very beginning. At the yeah. end, they had another thing with the score that my roommate did not want to stick around for, so we left. Yeah. yeah. So what was like? What all did they talk about in that? Because because the only reason I'm saying let's talk about it now is because we're on to the yeah the Broadway the, musical the Broadway musical score thing that the Joker sings this stupid song. Yeah, but I was like, pretty much what I guess they just say is like the the actual the actual song is it's like it, it 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 to them I guess they it sounded like it was like a very upbeat song or something something like a a Broadway musical would be perfect for the Joker or something in, in their words, which I, I didn't quite uh, I didn't quite agree with uh, with the whenever it gets to the part where ever he's singing over you know the the I guess the naked images of uh, Barbara and everything and and. Gordon's like screaming out in horror and stuff over that while Joe is singing. I think it. I felt it worked then. I think the lead up up to that. Yeah, but like, yeah, him just singing by himself. Yeah, that was, was a little bit. Yeah, and like if they just would have had him singing, and Jim's going through the tunnel with the pictures all around him, stuff like yeah. that. I think that would have been a little bit better. But them actually animating the whole score with the circus people, the circus freaks in the background. You know, yeah. doing weird Broadway jigs with him, that was yeah. a bit much. That it didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, it's like if, it, if it was if it was a little bit more in the background and stuff, because because immediately whenever it's like it was so it's like Gordon like screaming out in horror at the at the images and stuff, and that uh, music was more in the background at that point. Any anyways, like that that really kind of made your heart start beat uh, beating. You know, yeah. that's 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 the effect that you kind of want. You know? Yeah, so, if it would have been like a minute instead of like what two minutes that it was yeah like they would have cut it down in half that would have been perfect yeah it's like it, it kind of felt like it overstayed it, it overstayed its welcome there yeah yeah but, but anyway yeah he gets uh so G gordon gets through the get, gets through this uh weird tunnel of love or whatever and then that, <laughs> at this point at, at this point uh batman finally tracks down wherever the, uh, the joker has gordon hold up and then he comes in and starts beating up some circus freaks you know uh, beating up the two-headed people, <laughs> beating up the beating up poor Wolfman, beating up poor Wolfman. Is uh, th then at th then at, th at this point, I guess he finds uh, Jim Gordon pretty much cowering like in a in a in a cage and everything. At this point, it's like he, he, so he's shivering and everything. So it's like it, the play it's meant to play with the audience that you know he's so he he may have gone off the deep end at this point, which I wouldn't say I blame him at this point. <laughs> yeah, but. but 
Jim this whole time does not falter. Like Batman goes to the Joker, kind of runs off into this uh, like house of mirrors. Yeah, the yeah the the weird the weird reality stuff like upside down upside down rooms and yeah, things like. Yeah, and Batman goes. Batman's going after him. Kind of wants to stay a little bit with Jim, make sure he's okay. But Jim tells him to go, and he wants him to bring Joker in by the book. Yes. Not the way that the Joker, because the Joker, I think this whole time just wants to die. Yeah, yeah. That that seems that seems to be his 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 play here. Like because he also, wants like, Batman to kill him. Yeah, because of, because that that also shows that you know it's like Bat, Batman's gone over the deep end if he man, if he kills you know the Joker. Exactly. Because that that's his one fast rule that he he won't he won't cross that line. Well, he'll cross that line a little bit, you know, later. <laughs> we'll, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Um, so, goes through this mirror. Well, it, we don't even really have to come to that because he gets attacked by Batman. Gets attacked by the midget people, yep. and basically grabs that one and throws him into the spike pit. I so that guy's so, totally dead. Yeah, yeah. It's like Michael Keaton taking that bomb and putting it in that one guy and then pushing him off the edge. And what was that? Returns. And in, in returns, and then yeah. in, and then and then in the main Batman feature, I guess he's fighting that one. Yeah, I in guess, the clock tower, he throws him off. Yeah, he's like grabs him, grabs his legs around his neck, then throws him off. <laughs> yeah. Off. So I guess Batman he can kill when you know they don't yes. matter. Say he'll kill the henchman, but whenever it comes to the main boss, yeah, you not... won't die. Henchman, he will kill you. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of like how pretty much the the Joker ended up being the way he is. He became a boss by Batman, pretty much killing everybody else, the regular guy. <laughs> so we go into the final little couple scenes. Uh, Batman and the Joker they have this fight, uh, basically in an upside down version of Joker Joker's old apartment. Yeah. Where the Joker just completely owns him. Like the whole entire time. Batman doesn't really stand a chance. Yeah, so he's he, just he, he, constantly he, he, getting beat. Yeah, then he's just taking like like plate plates to his head, like stepping on his head. It's like taking a so like taking a uh, cast iron skillet, taking it up against his head. <laughs> yeah. That jeez, good lord cast iron skillet yeah uh but then you know batman obviously because it's batman he's gonna turn the tables a little bit and they go out a window together and it's raining go go ahead take us home take us home with that oliver what happens what happens next yeah i was like one, one thing we kind of missed at the i guess the beginning of the actual i guess at the midpoint of this movie oh, yeah. is, which, which, it, which it circles back around to is that is the Bat- Batman at one at one point uh, he tries to visit the Joker. This is wherever he finds out that the Joker is you know out. He, he, he escapes. Oh, that, he, he yeah, that was a good scene. So he basically wants to have one rational conversation with the Joker, just to at this point just say he, say he did. You know, try to he, he wants to say that it's like let's let's kind of put all this behind us. I want to save you. So I want to save you. It's like because because at this point it's like either you're gonna kill me or I'm gonna kill you. So it was like at, at this point I just want to at least give us give ourselves the opportunity to you know, say say that basically say that he tried. So yeah. that way he doesn't really have anything on his conscience. So it's like I'm gonna give you this opportunity to kind of like I'll mentor you, everything like that. You just kind of I'll help you reform. We can kind of reform together because. Yeah. Technically, he has a vigilante in a suit that goes around and beats the crap out of people. Yeah, so and, and I think that uh, Bat- Batman may be aware that he, he ultimately was the guy that made him too. Yeah. So it's like at, at this point, it's like at the end, this is the conversation that he wanted to have at the at the at the middle of this feature, you know. So anyway, he, he finally has it, and then the, the Joker, who the Joker at this point looks like he's had the closest thing to a rational like conversation with anybody probably for years. He says, he kind of hesitates. He kind of, kind of like he wants to say, "Sure, you know, well, let's go ahead and end this. You know, we can depart as friends or whatever." But basically, but basically, he says, "Nah, it, it's too late." Yeah, it's too late. I, I, I do like that uh, part where he, like, they fall out of the window and Joker pulls the gun on him. Yes. He's, he's, go- he's gonna shoot him. He's like, he's got the gun and he's got Batman dead rights. Pulls the trigger and it's a prop gun. 
is it yeah it's, it's that it's like click 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 or whatever on the or bang 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 or whatever yeah. on the little scroll thing he's like god damn it yes. <laughs> it's hilarious that was that was a really good part yeah, it's like everybody in the theater at that point was laughing. He's like, oh, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, and then he, he said something after that, but everyone was laughing so hard that I couldn't hear it. I was like, oh, nah, nah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I couldn't hear that part either. But then, it, it, anyway, yeah, it's like the, the, the Joker at this point declines B- Batman's offer to, to, you know, to save him or whatever, you know, to kind of get, get him back to being sane. And then they, he, he starts to tell a joke, you know, like, uh, I can't, I can't really go. Tell, okay, it's uh, two inmates escape from prison. They get up on the or escape from the mental asylum. They go up on the uh, the roof. They see these roofs across. One jumps across and tries to get the other guy to jump across, but the other guy won't. So the first guy has a flashlight, and he's like, "Okay, what I'll do?" And he's, uh, "I'll shine the flashlight across the gap, and you can just walk across." And the uh, same, <laughs> yeah. And the other guy's like, "I'm not." It's like, "What do you think I am? Crazy? You just turn it off when I'm halfway across." And then the Joker just starts laughing, and then Batman starts laughing, and then Batman, you know, they're just having this, you know, nice little like laughy mint, you know, laughy little moment. Batman puts his hands on his shoulders. We start yeah. fading down, fading down. We see their feet, see a puddle. And yeah, then Batman then, laugh a couple more times and we fade to black. That's the end of the movie. It's a, uh, it's like yeah, it's like the, you you, know, you I mean you you notice that uh, the joke the Joker isn't laughing after a certain point. It's just Batman. At that exactly, point. and there's there's a couple theories. It's a very ambiguous ending. It's it's, def, it's definitely a bit more ambiguous in the comic. I think they there's also a post credit scene here. But, oh, uh, oh, the post credit scene is. Martha's good is now in a wheelchair and is good at wall wall and has become Oracle. Yeah. There's your post credit scene. <laughs> Hope you yeah. waited the extra thirty seconds into the credits to watch that. Yeah. Is that, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's ambiguous because the just the way I see it, mm-hmm. Batman uh, may have uh, strangled him, strangled himself a Joker. Yeah. Because or they went off. To, yeah, I guess. I guess the the popular theories are they just kind of went off together to just, I guess, be friends or whatever and kind of retire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, either that or Batman gut punched him and waited for the cops and they took him to Arkham and so they can continue this wonderful cycle that they've been doing, or Batman killed him. Yep. I was like, that was the that was the whole point of that. Uh, last conversation or whatever is like because at, at that at that point he so joker joker refuses offer so it's like you so you know it's going to end at some point the the, the cycle will eventually end with one of them dying yeah you know? exactly so it's like that, that may have been that may have been you know batman's choice at that point to just go ahead and say well it's like you refuse my offer we're gonna end this anyway so that could be the that that could be the end of the joker so uh, i like to think that was the end of the joker I like to think that too, but uh, at, at least from at least from the movie standpoint, uh, you know, it's like there's you know, uh, Gordon. It's like he he ultimately keeps his sanity, and the whole what I think they're trying to do with the whole prologue and stuff with Babs, and later with the with the post credit scene is basically she's a third character that goes through Joker's. Yeah, she know, she just kind of gets caught up in it. So she she gets caught up in it, but she also has her own terrible day. <laughs> Yeah, everybody had a really bad day. Everybody had a really bad day, and then it's like pretty much the Gordons at the end of this. They keep their they keep their hope. Yeah, and Barb. One could say Barbara has a really bad lifetime because she's now stuck in that chair. Yeah, but I mean, it's like it's it, it's all how you proceed from that, and she yeah. she decides to keep her hope and you know keep on with the uh, Mary's Mary's uh, Tim Drake. Tim Tim Drake or uh, or uh, Dick Grayson. Well, no, she marries Tim in the games. In the games? What yeah. games? In the Arkham games. Like in uh, the last Arkham game. Which one was that? It was uh, Arkham Knight. Is that the last one? The one with the uh, Red Hood? So the one with Red Hood. Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess it was Arkham Knight. Yeah, she marries uh, Tim Drake. I must have missed that part. <laughs> oh, dude, that's a whole part. 
Yeah, they uh, they're in a relationship and then they get married, and like they they're supposed to be going on their honeymoon soon. Uh, uh, and I think that's when she gets captured again. Yeah, that's and right. Then, and then Pasa, and then everyone thinks she dies. Spoilers for Arkham Knight, which came out like three last years year. ago. So that was last year. Was it okay? Spoiler for the game that came out last year. Yeah, I thought it was 2014. No. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. It was next gen. Yep. It was, it was, yeah, it was Xbox One. Yeah. So. I mean, we, we let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the the cast. Mm-hmm. So we have reprising their wonderful roles. We have Mark Hamill as the Joker. Mm-hmm. Kevin Conroy as Batman. And probably yep. my favorite part of the whole thing, Tara Strong as Barbara Gordon. Yes. She was fun. I didn't know, like, because I didn't really do a lot of research in this movie. All I knew was Conroy and Hamill mm-hmm. were reprising their roles. I, I, it was a pleasant surprise when it was Tara Strong. When she first came on and she was Batgirl and she was, you know, doing her, all of her whole stuff at the very beginning, I was like, that kind of sounds like Tara Strong. But then, you know, when she and Batman are like, like, they have that little argument before they, you know, shag. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's totally Tara Strong. Yep. I will yep. say for a uh, – th- and this was this was uh, DC's first animated R movie. Yeah. And they did not swear a lot in it. I thought it was going to be a lot more swear heavy. Yeah, I thought there'd be you know your your usual two uh, two f bombs. Yeah. yeah, and we didn't we didn't get we didn't get any f bombs, did we? No. Huh. Yeah, no f bombs. Uh, got a couple s's. Um, we got a bs. Yeah, but we, no, and... but but not the actual word, just bs. Yeah. And I was like, okay, okay, Tara, I understand. You don't want to swear. However, you did a lot of that and drawn together, so it seems a bit weird. <laughs> But yeah, no, then, she was she was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, like the 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 big three in this were good, and then the uh, the other two uh, other characters of any real note. There's uh, Gordon, who was uh, Ray Weiss, who's been in several different things. Yeah, and then Francesco was John DiMaggio, the the other the other good Joker. Yeah. Oh, I did. I did like at the very like when they when they showed that thing with Mark Hamill, he was talking about the Jokers throughout. Yeah. Uh, time like with uh, Caesar and everything. I did like that he mentioned DiMaggio, and I was like, "Oh, yeah." He was such a good Joker. Yeah. So he, he also gave it up to Michael Emerson, who was the Joker in uh, Dark Knight Returns. Dark, yeah. I, did, I thought it was pretty good. But yeah, I, I his, his been... was good, but DiMaggio, but... which is really sad that DiMaggio only got to do it once. Yeah, it's like he, it's like they they at least they at least have him around. So it's like I guess the. Uh, I guess at some point he might be a, be a Joker but again. But he didn't mention everybody's favorite Joker. Heath Ledger. Brent Spiner. Oh yeah, from uh, from uh, Young Justice. From Young Justice. But he have like two like grunt lines or something. Yeah, he had like like two lines as the Joker. But hey, Brent Spiner was the Joker. Yep. That's all Brent's that matters. Data Joker. Data Joker. That's <laughs> that's just lore at that point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, lore. Uh, yeah, okay. I did have a couple problems with this movie. Yeah. A lot the animation of it. I do not think that it was meant to be on the big screen. Yeah. I I guess they didn't have the budget for it or maybe it wasn't intended to be on the big screen. It was just going to be straight to video. Yeah, which which, which is really what it is, you know. It's like it's, if it's since it's only like a one night event, you know. Yeah, and and it was like I kind of wish I would have waited yeah. and just got it on Blu-ray and watched it at home because mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't have had as many problems with the animation that I did. Yeah. And it's, you know, only stuff that I think you're really going to, you know, see on a ridiculously big, like, movie theater screen. If you're yeah. just watching it, even on, like, the 55-inch that we have at the house, I don't think you're going to see a lot of it because there's yeah. a lot of parts, like, when Barbara's turned, like, the way her mask and cow look it doesn't look good but again oh, yeah. it was like 20 feet tall yeah yeah but yeah that was probably one of my one of my problems with the movie that and the whole 
Barbara Gordon Joker may did they didn't they type yeah. thing. I was like, I think that's, I think that's partially what they, you know, did to push the push the R rating and stuff like that. Um, oh, I thought they did that just so they could have Barbara somehow. Oh, by the way, she is extremely skilled at you know ripping. Like she takes that cowl off, and yeah. her suit is, I guess, like like a it, it was basically like a tube top because she just like rips that right off. Yeah, it's like it's like, like, like oh, jeez. <laughs> No body armor whatsoever. Yeah, I thought it's like, is that not Under Armour? I mean, even Under Armour is a little bit harder to take off than that. Yeah. But yeah, not even spandex. He just rips it off. But apparently, it was fantastic. Yep. I did, li- I, I did like that gay guy. He was pretty funny. Yeah. He was <laughs> and really I, good. And, and of course, uh, Barbara's trying to describe, I guess, her her, uh, her troubles yoga. that she's with yeah with uh, Bruce and everything. She described it as the yoga class. It's uh, it's uh, it's, uh, I'm kind of it's like I'm kind of attracted to this uh, yoga instructor. It's like just go to a different yoga. It's like there is no other like, class. There is no other yoga. There is no other yoga. That's really good. Yeah, that actually was pretty funny. I thought. Yeah, I like their interactions. The the two of them together were really funny. I only had yeah. to come back. Yeah. Oh man. Um, but, but yeah, so one, oh sorry, go one, ahead. One good, one good thing I will say about the, the animation and stuff, I did like the way they drew, uh, the, the Joker in this, you know, he, yes. he, he, they definitely made him look, you know, menacing, you know, different than some of the other interpretations of the Joker. I know, really like liked it. his hair, and there were a couple shots that were really, really good, like the one where he, like, opened, like, when Barbara opens the door and sees him for the first time, and he's wearing yeah. the hat, and his, like, up to, like, his nose, they did that, like, reverse of the classic like uh star yeah you know, like the old like, i say star trek but i mean they did it a lot but like when they have to show that somebody's like being menacing and they zoom in on the eyes and brighten the their eyes yeah that little bright spot in exactly the but and they did the reverse of that with him so it's all black but you can only see like the pupils it was, it was so good yeah so that, so you, that, that's such an, such an iconic shot from the from the comic yeah and I, th- I thought they did that extremely well and the other part that was it, it it was it was really cool but it looked really out of place with the rest of the animation when he turns on the yeah, on the the amusement park yeah and, so. and he like looks at it and like the lights are all in his eyes and on his face it just looked really weird it looked it looked really anime-esque <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like that, that, and then the the twinkle in the in the you know darkened eye. You know, it's like that, those, those those visually looked a bit different than I guess the rest of the animation, but they, it's like those definitely pop. You know, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, they were really cool. Like, yeah. Definitely saying they're really cool. It's just it was weird. It didn't really fit. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like that looked like something that we would have seen in Red Hood. Yeah. Because yeah. the, just the style with Red Hood, that was you know I could have seen that more. Yeah, but okay. So, let's let's just throw this out. Ranking this, let's go your top five like animated Batman movies. Okay, um, I know it's putting you on the spot. Let's see, probably pro- pro- my probably my number one. You know, is Under the Red Hood. Uh, cl- close second, uh, Mask of Phantasm. Yes. So far, we're one hundred percent with each other. Yep, and then three. Um, I'd probably do, uh, Dark Knight Returns Part 2. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because that one's, you know, the whole Superman fight and, you know, the, the Joker fight. Yeah. So that, so that one's, that, that one's pretty, that one's just awesome, you know. Um, and then probably this one would be number four for me. Uh, the number five would be, uh, Batman Year One. Yeah, see, I, I swap Year One with, uh... Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Yeah. Like, I, I would I would go uh, Hood, Phantasm, uh, Year One, Dark Knight, and then go a little bit weird, throw Justice League War in there. Not oh. really a Batman movie, like, yeah. per se. Yeah, the characterization. But I that. really, I really like that Batman. Some, some 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 other some other good ones. Uh, I guess there was that. Uh, ju- ju- uh, I guess the Justice League was a Crisis on Two Earths. I did like that one. Oh yeah, 
That'd be like that'd be like my honorable honorable mention number six, I think. Yeah, that's a good one. But speaking speaking of year one, uh, the the, fla- the the flashbacks, the color palette uh, of the Joker flashbacks, that kind of reminded me of year one. Kind yeah, of like yeah, I can, brown. See, I can see that. So, so that br- that br- that brought that back up in the forefront of my mind. You know. So. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, well, okay, so. I guess let's, uh, we've been going kind of long here. Let's go ahead and try and wrap this up. What, so just blanket, what would you think about the movie? Like, you recommend it? I, I do recommend it. Um, you know, it was like, if it, if it was, uh, if it was like, mo- like you know, it was like, go, go see it at a full price. Like, think of it as like, I guess, a movie, I guess, movie, you know, uh, take a price yeah, or something. Yeah, like, I, is it a, uh, is I'd, it I'd a it, matinee? Say- I guess we can't really say that. <laughs> yeah. Is it an early bird, a matinee? So, uh, in terms of movie ticket price, a matinee. In terms of, I guess, just buying, buying everything. I, w- I wouldn't say you know buy it opening night, but uh, I, you know it's like which, I, I which they can't they can't they can't do now. So yeah. like I guess it's gonna be straight Blu-ray release. Yeah, it's like there's the, there's like there's like the early digital copy, I guess, which is what they got, which is available right now actually. Um, and then they have yeah the Blu-ray release here in a couple weeks. Um, I, it's one of the things wherever you could you, you could you could pop, wait to see it, but uh, it's, it's, def, it's still a de- definitely good movie to see. Yeah, if you can find like a bundle with the Killing Joke, like the the graphic novel and the uh, and the I'm, movie, if you can find that for like I don't know like thirty bucks, twenty five yeah. thirty bucks, if you can find like a bundle like that, I say buy it. Yeah, yeah. If you're just gonna like, and it's one of those, definitely read the comic. And I probably should have bought it off. By the way, guys, if you get it on Amazon, it's ten dollars and sixteen cents right now. So just go ahead and yeah. pick a copy of the Killing Joke up. Uh, yeah, I would say go ahead and you know watch this movie. Put it with the other Batman movies mm-hmm. that you own. Yeah. It's, can't really go wrong with it. Yeah, it's like a good voice cast. Uh, all the, the the main five people that I mentioned, you know, those are those are all top notch. So Hamill's always good as the Joker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if you're really gonna want to go buy a uh, Batman film, go ahead and buy Under the Red Hood. Yeah, and we'll we'll hopefully we'll do something we'll, we'll do something on that soon. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Well, speaking of speaking of Under the Red Hood, it's like this uh, this informs some of the stuff up Under the Red Hood because. Uh, yeah, show I, Jason. Yeah, show Jason get I guess bloodied up. I guess bloodied in one of the like, yeah, it's like pretty much dead. And then the, and then of course uh, he mentions that under the red hood whenever he comes back that uh, how many how many friends is he crippled? You know, yeah. whenever he's running for the Joker. And and of course that's assuming that this is you know as as in the comics this is like a part of the continuity. If it, if it was just taken as a standalone story, then you could you view it as you know Batman kills the Joker. If not, then obviously he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Oliver, this was fun. Yes. We get to get yes. our roving correspondent on more often. Yep. Uh, so Oliver, where can uh, our wonderful listeners find you at? You can find me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, on Twitter, you can find me as uh, Oh Where Are You, uh, and uh, Where in this case is just uh, like warehouse, and uh, and then you can find me on Facebook as uh, Oliver Where. Awesome. And what about Instagram? Instagram, it's the same as my Twitter handle. The uh, Where Are You? I think it's Oh Where Are You One. One. And then, because yeah. some jerk took Oh Where Are You. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. well, all right. So that was our uh, review of uh, Batman The Killing Joke. Hope you yep. guys watch it, enjoy it. We'd like to hear from you. Tell us your thoughts on it. Uh, but Oliver, yeah, this was fun. Yep. And let's go ahead and kick it back to our regularly scheduled programming. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right, perfect. That was great. Nice. All right, yeah, it's a good 48 minutes, and I got to get out of here because Gavin's about to record with the Cloud City cast, so. Got that. Here, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this because I don't need to worry about beeps anymore. That's good.
Yeah, that was a, that was a, that was a good free form discussion. I think we covered most of the, most of the angles uh, a bit meanderingly, but that's fine for us actually. <laughs> yeah, I thought it actually went pretty good. We, yeah, we stayed yeah. pretty much on topic the whole time, except for the bits when we talked about Star Wars. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, Trek, the Jim Hadar, and then you know, as I, of course, I pull out uh, you know uh, gargoyles. Gargoyles, yeah, and I guess you know we talked about you know I guess Brent Spiner being the Joker. That's okay because he was a Joker. Yeah, he was a Joker, and then it's like pr- pretty much, pr- pretty much uh, what what if we missed? We retroactively kind of went back. Yeah, <laughs> and should shouldn't be a lot of editing, which would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Tried to fill in as many gaps as I could. Yeah. All right, sweet. Well, that was fun, Oliver. Yeah. Can you do it again? Uh, so, don't know when. Yeah. Well, just uh, let, let me know of uh, whatever, whatever uh, you know, uh, movie or couple episodes to you know to listen to for the week, and you know, I'll you know I'll do my prep for that, and we yeah. can record whenever you know. Okay, I so wonder, we need to whenever, do an anime. What's an anime that we both watched? Uh, we can either we can do Baka and Test. Oh, we, can, we should do Baka and Test. Uh, um, let's see. What's yeah, there are those. There's uh, there's uh, Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood. Oh, we could do we could do a whole Brotherhood thing. Yeah. Especially since Funimation let the license expire. Oh, did they? Oh, correct. Yeah, I think it ends like the end of this week, so you'll see all Full Metal Alchemist stuff pulled. No. Yeah. So it's a good thing you got your stuff early. So, I mean, if you want to buy the rest of the seasons, you may want to pick those up as soon as possible. Damn, and wouldn't you know, darn, Hastings is all closed down now. That was the place to get, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, especially at 30% off. I know. I'm going to I'm gonna go to the one in Norman on Saturday. Yeah. Just to see what's left. Yeah. Probably nothing, yeah. but. Yeah, probably nothing. Give a shot. But uh, okay. yeah, it's like for, you know, for uh, you know, if you if you want to get into you know DC animated stuff, you know, I can you know get into that because you know, it's like I I own most of them. Yeah, um, we didn't really talk about uh, yeah, we watched yeah, I, we both saw the Justice League and the Wonder Woman hit trailers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they both look really good. Oh yeah, it's like uh, yeah, it's like Wonder Woman looks good. It's like she's pretty much the more or less the I guess the Captain America. Yeah, the and I don't I don't want to see anything else for Justice League. Yeah, it's like that that was that was perfect enough to whet my appetite for it, and, and uh, it, it, all, it all looks cool. Uh, Ezra Miller Ezra Miller looks cool as the uh, as the Flash. Yeah, I'm uh, I kind of wondering what they're gonna do for a bad guy. So I think they have uh, it's like Steppenwolf. I think is the guy already. Yeah, that seems weird to go ahead and put him in. Yeah, I was like, it, it, it's it's not uh, you know a uh, not apocalypse uh, dark side. That it's not it's not him yet. I guess that's I guess is the leader of his armies. So it's like, good. you could see. I think if you threw Black Manta in there, that's how you could bring Aquaman into the fold. Yeah, but they probably won't do that because. Oh well. Yeah. All right, guys, that was a special bonus episode of the Animation Station. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yay! Damn it. All right, let us know what you guys thought about this episode, and if you'd like to hear us do some more bonus content, we'd like to hear from you guys. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at and Twitter at Josh L. Kane. All right, it's a pretty good episode. All right, for the Animation Station, I'm Josh. I'm Brandon. Tits. <laughs> Damn it, you can't say tits. You can edit it out. Nah. Thank you for listening to the Animation Station podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Animation Station Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Animate Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes. And join the conversation at SecretSuperheroClub.com, where you can connect with our podcast friends, Cloud City Cast, Getting Into Comics, and Sean of the Gathering.